Hello there again everybody, Boyd back with you. Oh, we've got something really interesting to show you guys today on the channel. This is the Uniformation GK2 8K resin printer. Uh, the good folks at Uniformation reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and asked if they could send a machine over and if I would do my own sort of honest review and test of this. So I was really happy to do that. Thanks so much you guys for sending it out to us. Um, I've really been uh, fascinated by this machine since I unpacked it. Uh, the specifications on the machine are right up there with my uh, Photon M3, which I've been really happy with. And um, it has some really interesting uh, user-friendly features as far as overall operation ease of use. It's got a unique uh, built-in resin heating system, which really helps out for uh, working with printing when the temperatures get a little bit cold. And some other really cool in innovative features that I think you guys will really like out there in the 3D printing world. So without further ado, guys, let's back up a little bit. I'll show you the basic uh, uh, unpacking of this thing, and then we'll talk about the accessories it comes with, and we'll take you through the basic setup today. Be right back with that, everybody. Okay, so let's take a look at the accessories that come with our GK2 printer. You can see that we've got kind of the standard fare here. We've got our leveling paper, which uh, we're going to be talking about the leveling feature on this machine here very shortly, but uh, it has a very unique system. Uh, it's supposed to come pre-leveled from the factory, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the procedure of doing the uh, the test leveling to make sure I get familiar with how it works and everything. We'll be doing that in just a bit here when we get everything set up. So we're all set for that. We have an extra uh, FEP film here, which is really nice right off the bat. As we all know, we're going to be going through FEP film. Uh, the more we print, we have a certain life expectancy on this, so it's nice that you get these right off the bat. None of my other printers that I have... Um, actually came with this so this is really nice and then we have our um, our basic operators manual here there's some uh, suggestions in here for uh, doing a couple of test prints for your exposure settings and things like that uh, we have a basic operators manual we have the uh, resin vat installation steps which this also has a really unique system for uh, installing the vat and it's a uh, the vat itself has some really neat features. We're going to cover that in just a little bit. Um, then we've got some information here about uh, setting up uh, basic supports and things like that on your prints. Now, uh, Uniformation actually does have their own slicer program. I've never used it before, so I'm going to go ahead and load that on my laptop here and um, get used to using it. So they say that their machine is calibrated to work with their slicer system. So we'll definitely be giving that a try and do the basic setup here. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. And then... Um, here we have the accessories that come with the printer. They did a really nice job with this. Now this first item here on top, I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe somebody out there in the printing world can uh, clue me in as to what that is for. But we'll probably find out along the course of the way here. Got a nice little soft rubber spatula for getting in and uh, stirring up our vat after it's been sitting for a little while or checking for debris or something in there. Got several pairs of uh, safety gloves here. We've got our little tool for adjusting the uh, build plate leveling. We've got a nice little uh, cutter for cutting our supports here, really nice. Okay, and then we've got a little pair of tweezers, nice little curved pair of tweezers, various Allen screws or Allen wrenches. A really nice uh, artist blade here for removing parts off of the build plate. Um, we've got some extra screws here, we'll have to look and see what those are for. We've got a little USB memory stick, and we've got a few little strainers here for uh, straining our resin. So a really nice little assortment of uh, accessories comes with this. Really uh, like the, uh, the rubber spatula instead of the hard plastic ones. That'll be really nice and hopefully add a little extra life to our FEP. Okay, you guys, well, there's a quick look at the accessories. Let's go ahead and bring the machine in here now, and we'll show you the basic setup and the basic uh, unpacking of the packing material and uh, show you some of the unique features that this machine has. We'll be right back with that. I just unfinished packing the machine, and you can see we're taking a look at the back of it here. Overall, I'm really uh, impressed with the overall look of the machine, the quality of the construction. It's a fairly heavy unit. Uh, we have our power cord here, which is kind of nice on this one. We don't have that, uh, you know, that transformer box that we usually see attached to the power cords on most printers. This one is internal, so it makes uh, plugging this in very simple and very easy. And uh, you can see we've got four little um, 
cooling fans here. I turned the, uh, mach the machine on briefly here just to test that out, and it operates really, really quiet. You don't have to worry about it being obnoxiously loud when you're working or anything like that, so no worries there. I like to have the extra cooling capability that'll uh, uh, hopefully make the electronics in this last a long time. Now, here we've got our unique uh, air filtration cartridge. Uh, many of the modern printers now are going to this, so you can hopefully cut down a little bit of the... Uh, the odors and the fumes coming from resin, as we know, that can be dangerous if you're in a small, confined area. Um, you want to always make sure you're, you know, uh, setting up proper ventilation when using a resin printer, so that's really important. But uh, as far as installing this goes, it's straightforward and simple. It just plugs into this slot, just like that, and you're ready to go. It's got kind of little magnets that hold it in place, and they actually sell replacement cartridges for these on their website, so you can look that up. So uh, that's a very unique and nice feature to have. So let's turn the machine around next and take a look at the front and we'll show you the, uh, the basic setup and go over the details about the build plate and the uh, VAT and all the uh, important features this machine has. So here we are with a look at the overall machine itself and as you can see it's a very nice presentation, very nice looking machine, everything uh, sleek and clean and not overly done. We have a couple nice features here where we have our power button right in front where it's easy to get to. We have our USB stick input here right in the front, so that's easy to get to as well. And we have this nice uh, flip-up lid feature, which uh, I think going forward on a lot of the printers that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be looking for that feature. I've uh, grown tired of having to take the big domes off of my old type printers whenever I'm taking everything off there, and you tend to get a lot of uh, fingerprints on those and things like that, so I really like this feature here. Now, this machine itself is sort of revolutionary in the way that they're approaching the, uh, the setup with the uh, build plate and the... Uh, the resin vat. This is a really nice setup that they have going here and I was really impressed with it. You can see instead of having your typical screws or your typical single bolt here on the top, they've got this clamp system here. So you basically just release this clamp and you can pull your build plate out, which is really easy and nice. And you can see on the bottom we've got a nice uh, large size build plate. I'll go ahead and put the specifications for that up on the screen here for you. But they've got this little extra thing. If you look around at the little extra features they've done here, they really um, did a great job kind of following through in a lot of things. You can see they've got like a little uh, drip rail built in around the edge of the, uh, the build plate on the bottom here. So when you flip this over, you know, hopefully you're not going to get a lot of uh, overflow coming off of that and staining everything. I tend to, uh, when my prints finish, leave them hanging there for a good couple hours so they sort of drip dry for a while before I try to pull them out. And that saves some of the mess as well. But uh, this is a nice little extra feature. This build plate has a sort of a satin type finish on it. It's not as rough as some of the other build plates that I've seen, so um, the uh, people that have been using this machine already for now for several months have not reported any kind of problem with that, and it's working quite well, so um, that's a really nice feature as well. You can see they take this really unique approach here to the, um, the leveling of the plate. We don't have the uh, ty typical Allen screws on the side bracket here um, where we have to adjust that, so basically you've got four Allen head screws here. You'll lower this down to the zero axis, and um, you'll adjust these four screws here, uh, loosen them, and once you get it, you know, down on your uh, your paper and everything, you'll just retighten those, and you'll be good to go. Uh, now this comes supposedly pre-leveled from the factory, but like I mentioned earlier, we're going to go ahead and go through that process with you guys just to show you how to do that and make double sure that our uh, our print you know our print bed is level and everything. That's very critical when you use uh, resin type printers. Now we've also got this really cool tray set up here. Which you can see um, a lot of times with the vats as well, they have the bolts that hold those in. This has a unique sort of a rack system where it just sort of slides into these slots here and uh, locks itself in place. Now the vat tray itself is made out of some plastic, and I think the kind of, the jury is kind of out on that as to whether um, you know how long these will last. But again, people have been using these for quite a while now and not reporting any kind of problems with it. So we'll just have to kind of see how that goes. We've got the pre-installed FEP, as you can see. We had to remove our protective film on that, but it's all set and ready to go. Now, one of the nice things about this vat is that you can see, basically, you pour your resin in this, and you fill it up until about the, you know, the center part of it is full here. So you've got this uh, nice overflow area. So if you, you know, happen to uh, get a little sloppy with your resin or something like that, you're not immediately going to be spilling it onto the, you know, the nice part of your printer here. So that's the other nice little feature that they have. You can see here we've got a max of 700 G's, uh, 700 grams for our resin uh, total volume, so we have to be aware of that. Uh, 
And then another feature that's really nice down here, you can see on the uh, LCD screen, I've removed the, uh, you know, the factory supplied uh, protective coating on that, but we've got plenty of room here to attach a screen saver, which we'll definitely be doing a little bit later on. But they've got this, uh, this LCD screen raised above the surface, which I really like. That means if you uh, accidentally spill some, some resin, you know, get some resin overflow on your edges around here, it's not immediately going to get, you know, onto your LCD screen. You've got a little ridge here that's kind of protecting it. Uh, from you know getting on the top of that again so a nice little thoughtful uh, thing that they did with this printer and uh, just one of many little things and as we see when we power up and look at the uh, user interface we'll see some more little neat little features that they have built into this machine that I really really like so far so let me get everything set up here you guys the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back get you a little closer and we're gonna show you the uh, leveling uh, procedure and then we'll be able to uh, kinda go into some of the user face and then uh, we're gonna finish up by showing you everything set up in its permanent home here and we'll be right back with that okay everybody well I've set everything up here and we're ready to do our leveling of our build plate I didn't even bother to test to see if this was leveled from the factory or not I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure and I want to learn this procedure anyway so you can see we've got our interface pulled up here so we basically just pull this over and we can see we've got our z-axis movement we're gonna go ahead and hit that and then we're going to bring the z-axis down to zero now um, I just use the handy little tool that the uh, machine comes with here I just loosen these uh, four allen screws on the top of the build plate so we're all set and ready to go once this comes down and sits on top of this all we have to do is go ahead and tighten these back up so let's go ahead and move down to zero now and take just a second I'm also really impressed with the uh, the noise level of our you know our, our z-axis movement here it's really really quiet Just follow the instructions as far as how you lay out these little pieces of paper here, and you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, we'll give it just a second to settle in there. And it looks like we're there, so now all we have to do is just tighten these up. And just like that, you guys, we have a leveled print bed. So let's go ahead and um, move our axis back up. We're going to take it back up 100. Now we can remove our, uh, our test setup. Now you want to make sure you hold on to this, store this in an area where we'll where you'll remember where it is and uh, if we ever have to go through this procedure again whenever you replace your FEP in your vat or anything like that you always want to re-level the bed okay I think that should be good now basically we can go back and take a look real quick at the interface you can see we've got several uh, features here you've got a system update you've got a vat cleaning procedure an exposure uh, exposure test your z-axis movement uh, to check what's on your disk you have built-in internal storage in this machine which is a really nice feature because if you uh, happen to get corrupted data on your uh, USB stick or anything like that during the middle of the print the uh, machine will go to the backup uh, data and make sure your print will finish successfully we have a data cleaning when the uh, memory disk in the machine gets full let's kind of scroll through this a little more and see if there's anything else we have system settings language settings and so on and so forth nice sized uh, screen very easy to read uh, one of the other outstanding features this machine has you guys I want to point out is that uh, if you're actually going to be printing in areas where it's going to get a little bit cold this actually has a built-in heating system you can see right now it's showing you that we have 32.3 Celsius 
I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but um, now here in Texas, I don't have to worry about that too much. Most of the time, we're on the hot side as far as that goes, so I've never had an issue with my resin. Uh, and I got my first machine early in the spring. But uh, going over the winter months here, and I'm operating you know, everything out in the garage here, this might be a really handy feature to have. Of course, you're, if you're in a really um, extreme conditions where you're getting down to you know, 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit in your shop, you're probably definitely going to need to have some kind of uh, you know, external heating source because this can only do so much. But it is a really nice little feature uh, that they built into this machine. So again, going back to my overall impression of this, I'm just really pleased that um, you know, not always are they... Um, focus on getting you know uh, the basics of the uh, the resolution and everything like that um, you know which is all pretty much standard these days on these 8k printers are basically all the same uh, they're giving you some really user-friendly things here an ease of operation and just you know more of a kind of a user-friendly design overall that makes hopefully you know with the flip top lid here the ease which we can take the build plate on and out the uh, anti-spill kind of defenses that are built in here into the system hopefully we can keep this machine really really clean over time and that's one thing that I'm kind of picky about you know you make a pretty big investment in these machines and you like to keep them looking nice and a lot of people out there that are into 3d printing are really into that so uh, overall really really pleased you can see we'll bring the uh, we'll bring the vat back in here and uh, I'll show you one more little nice little extra touch they give you with this we can show how easy this can go back in We've got our slot system here. I'm gonna make sure I'm putting in this in the right way. It goes like this. Okay, and we just slide that in. Basically like that, and it locks. Whoop, I missed the slot there. Wanna make sure you double check that, you guys. It, but it basically locks right into place just like that. And another nice little feature they give you is this really nice little vat cover. So if you've got your resin sitting in there for a little while, you don't wanna let dust or anything get in there, you can kinda of just slide this in place and lock that down. And you have a nice little vat cover. Now, uh, I did notice that when that's on there, the lid will rub on it a little bit, so remove that before you're going to be operating the lid or anything like that. So, other than that, everything's really great, you guys, so I'm really, really pleased overall. Uh, what we'll do next is we're going to set the machine up in its permanent location, get everything ready to go, get some resin poured in there, and uh, we're going to do our um, uh, kind of last talk about the overall impression of the machine, and we'll come back and show you that here in just a second, everybody. All right, everybody. Well, I've got the machine set up in my work area here, and I'm really pleased with everything so far. Ease of setup, uh, clear instructions, some nice little features that we went through on this machine. This Uniformation GK2, I think, holds a lot of promise here. But the meat and potatoes, you guys, as always, is in the printing itself. But we'll be back in the next video with that. We're going to print out a couple of models and give you some reviews and uh, do some testing and uh, kind of get the machine dialed in. As I mentioned, I'm going to be working with the... Uh, Uniformation uh, slicer program and learning that a little bit. Probably start off with my go to Cheeto box, but uh, we'll just kind of take it from there. Uh, one of the concerns I had setting up my, on my shelf here, I'll just point out real quick, was the uh, you know, how close you could have it to the wall and still have the lid open up all the way, but we have no issues there. I've got about an inch or so behind it, a couple of inches. You also want to make sure that uh, you leave enough gap, you know, gap between the uh, the filter in the back and the wall so you don't uh, block the air from getting in there and uh, have that overheater get clogged or something like that so just be aware of that but otherwise really really pleased so far you guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions uh, you can comment down below there'll be a link uh, down below in the uh, description of where you can actually purchase one of these machines and also to the uh, Uniformation website so I hope you'll check that out very very happy with this machine guys and if you guys are uh, looking for a new 8k printer this might be the machine for you. Okay, we'll see you in the next video coming very soon, everybody. Take care and happy modeling, everyone.